Hey guys, Carl here, Cultivate with Carl. It's time for your Monday update. So let's get busy, not waste any time. We got a lot going on in the garden. Looks like we might have some pest problems, maybe some balsam in rot, and there's Operation Rocket that we have to talk about. So stay tuned for Cultivate with Carl. All right, guys, here we go. Here's the uh, strawberry plants in the towers. We've got our first strawberry going there. Check it out right here. And it appears that everybody in here is doing well. So um, I'm not a fan of the strawberry uh, towers, but this one's doing okay. Here we have all the volunteer blackberries. These are native to Mississippi and uh, they're growing pretty good. So I've actually got some in the house and uh, we're gonna keep picking them because they're good to eat. So there you go. The strawberries. Alright guys, here are the carrots and some of the uh, pepper plants that I planted. So there's one, two, and I'm not really sure where the third one is because we had a raccoon incident and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but supposedly, like next Monday, these are going to be ready to harvest. But I can tell you right now that those are not ready to harvest. Those probably will be getting there. So we're going to water them some more, see what happens. I think... Probably my watering with these was not on par. So uh, I did not get the growth. Now, these were, in fact, I think the Danvers carrots. Let me see if I can get the uh, gimbal to cooperate. Yeah, these were not Danvers. These were, the, these were the Danvers over here, the ones that looked like they did well, and the other ones were not. So we'll keep working on those. But uh, let's poke around. See if we can see any carrot tops. No carrot tops yet. And the soil is pretty moist. Yeah, soil's not bad. All right, there we go. So the carrot update. All right, guys, here's the pepper plants. Um, we had raccoon damage in the middle. And that's uh, basically Operation Rocket, which is trying to get rid of the raccoon family. Um, it, they, he didn't do too much damage in this bed but uh, we have two fatalities. We got these two peppers right here, and these were supposed to be the uh, Fresh Bite Orange Peppers, and they did not thrive. So these were store-bought. I followed all the directions. However, you can see they're both pretty much dead. And they survived, or they didn't survive in the bed where everything else did. So we're starting to get peppers on the shishito uh, peppers, starting to get them on there. The little sweet pepper guys over here, they're rocking. They got uh, all kind of peppers going on. Uh, and those were snack peppers. Over here we got some of these giant Marconis. Uh, they're coming up. And then we're getting some on the jalapenos. So you can see right there, some of the jalapeno peppers are coming up. And then the banana peppers in the back. So I think the peppers are doing pretty good. I'm getting ready to start staking them to the trellis. And then you'll, uh, and then they'll be able to grow right up that uh, trellis vine. But I mean, uh, this is my first year growing peppers. So here we go is the, uh, these are sweet peppers. These are this kind of pepper right here, snackable reds. They're supposed to get about two inches big, and then you make little snacks out of them. So these are doing pretty well. Let me uh, pull the leaf up here. Yeah, you can see them all plucked up in there. So pretty happy uh, with the pepper bed. There you go. First time. Okay, here is the potato bed, and the potatoes are dying like they're supposed to. The, the tops of the plants are dying off, and soon we'll be digging in this bed to get our potatoes out. Now, uh, you know, under normal circumstances, had I not done the research, I'd be freaking out that the plants had died off, but they're supposed to do that. So once these plants die off, all their energy has been transferred to the tubers. We give the tubers a couple weeks and then we dig them all out. So the potatoes are coming soon to harvest and then we'll refurb the bed and we don't know what we're gonna put in there next. So this is what the potato bed looks like. And uh, it, it held up pretty well, but it, it all died on cue. So uh, there's three different types of potatoes in there. Well, hang on, I'm losing you. 
there's three different types of potatoes in there and hopefully they're not too overcrowded or else we're going to have small potatoes but hey small potato potatoes will eat just like big potatoes so there you go so let's look at okay we have trouble tomatoes. with this plant right here this plant has developed the uh, blossom end rot and so even though we've got good looking tomatoes we're starting to get blossom end rot you can see it right there um so i have calcium uh for these but the total the total answer is not just calcium the the fact is that i haven't been watering them consistently and so uh that is going to be the fix which is i'm going to transfer these over to here i'm going to add a line and then i will have them on the watering system those potatoes right there are getting ready to come out because they are the first sets of potatoes to ripen so they will come out these two pots will go over there where they can be watered and then um we'll go from there so we're going to set the watering up it's starting to get hot now and uh, that's that so here's the other plant and these potatoes or tomatoes i get mixed up they're doing fine no blossom in rot everything is good and uh it's just kind of weird that these have been fed the same as these and there's just no uh there's no telling so that's these these are supposed to be um Roma tomatoes, but I don't right, know if that's cucumbers. True. Cucumbers are starting to flower and fruit. You've got a uh, a slicer cucumber right there. They're starting to vine up really good. They're stretching out. Look at this. They're holding hands with the tomato plant, you know. So uh, I got to get these guys back in line. And uh, this trellis method is working okay. I actually kind of prefer the other one, but we'll keep going with this and see how it works. So around the back here, we have. Um, Around the back, we have uh, other pickles, the uh, pickle slicing pickles. So we've got three distinct rows. Got the irrigation system working out pretty good. And then that guy's coming out today. These guys are ready, or getting ready. This guy right here, he'll be coming out, not today, but there's one down there. So the, the cucumbers are starting to produce really well. In fact, I probably, this one was not this big yesterday. And I probably left them on there a little bit long. But he'll be coming out today so uh i'm pretty happy with the way that these cucumbers have progressed and uh look how many of them we're gonna be in cucumber heaven here in just a little bit so very nice i just would like to see those straight eights get to producing but so far no bug pressure knock on wood and uh if we do get some we'll deal with it over here we've got the uh three pepper plants that we transplanted in We'll see how they do. All right, let's go check out the Ooh, tomato bed. It is midday and that sun is beaming. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, tomato bed. Things are starting to happen. We've got cherry tomatoes right here. They're uh, starting to come out. Look at those. Bam. These are going to be some form of tomato. Uh, I don't think these are, these may be cherries. Probably not. But we'll see what happens. These are for sure going to be a cherry type. Uh, all these trellis methods are working pretty well. Here, nice stem, few flowers. Uh, we've been working with the paintbrush to get the pollen to the flowers. And then here, you're starting to see, look at that. These are edox tomatoes, and this is a edox tomato. So we should start getting lots of cherry tomatoes off these edox. There's nothing on this one yet, not even flowers. So we're kind of hit or miss in the old tomato garden. Um, here, these are looking good. Um, all right, this one on the end, rot. this is a better boy. And it seems to be putting on tomatoes pretty good. Looks pretty healthy, not a problem. This, oh no, looks like we got some kind of bug damage. I don't think it's blossom end rot. But we'll have to start getting out here and checking there. This is the Bonnie's original. We had a lot of trouble with these plants in the beginning, but they seem to be doing okay. This is a Kellogg's breakfast. Uh, that, I believe, is a flower. Here we have Bonnie's original also. Um, they're doing pretty well. This one, we don't know what type it was, because, but it looks like some kind of heirloom variety. I'm pretty happy with that one. And this one is going to be another cherry tomato of some sort but i got to get all the uh 
I've got to get all the uh, strings and stuff done up. This is before. This is my first day off, so I haven't had a chance to make everything look pretty. But there you go. The tomato bed. Okay, Let's check here out the go. buckets. Here we have potatoes. They're going to get ready to harvest. These are hossinator plants that are starting to grow. Now, one of them is going to get transferred into this bucket over here. These two plants are going to replace the two plants that died over in the um, pepper bed. So one of these hossinators will be coming out, and they're looking pretty good. This hossinator is looking pretty good. I'm about to build a, a trellis cage for them um, because I have no more of the store-bought ones. This one is looking great. We just don't know what kind of tomato it is. And we're waiting for the flowers to start producing. But I, I believe with the size, it's probably going to be an indeterminate of some size, of some type. Also here, we're starting to get flowers. These guys are doing pretty good. Pretty happy with these. So it seems like the bucket ones. Now here, we do have a lot. This is a sun gold. Now these should be yellow when they bloom. But we've got lots of blooms under there. I may be hitting these all with some shade cloth. To just keep them out of the sun those are going to get pulled out they're inf infiltrators from the neighbor's yard and here we have uh the rest so they're looking good potatoes that are getting ready to harvest uh, they're dying off like they should and then these are the final tomatoes or potatoes that are going to die off and they're doing pretty good too so here we have our zenas zinnias man these have been the surprise of the year. These things are so nice. I've gotten so many nice close-up photos. Like, let's see how close we can get. Golly, those things are pretty. So, yep. These have been a real treat. In fact, let me get some for the front yard. So there we have the buckets. Let's go check out the other strawberry bed. All right, guys. If you remember, we had the uh, strawberry tower tragedy. And this is where we moved everything. The strawberry plants look good. I can actually see a strawberry on that plant back there. Um, they get enough sun, it appears, in this bed. Plus, we've already put down the uh, enough fertilizer to do that. We've got one Kellogg's breakfast tomato in the back. And then it looks like we're starting to get some weed pressure. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of those weeds and uh, and try and keep this bed weed-free. This, this bed wasn't supposed to be planted for another year. That's why all the cardboard's in there. Um, we were doing soil prep and we were going to keep it going for a year But so as far as strawberries go if we're getting strawberries over here Hey, maybe we'll transfer all the strawberries over here, but I, I can see weed pressure in there coming on And so we got to get it good and leveled out. So I was gonna let the strawberries take And then actually put a little straw mulch in here and then see how we could get them to do so There you go for this is the strawberry ICU bed and everything appears to be going okay quick. let's take a look at the zucchini all right it looks like zucchini number two here is losing that battle like we thought that they would and i have nowhere to transfer him so i'm probably going to end up cutting him out but the uh, zucchini alpha here i've got two zucchinis growing and it looks like he's going to win the home in the pot these two are squash plants they're crookneck squash and this one i'm going to trellis to grow away from the pot this one is going to grow straight up. Let me back up a little bit. So you can see, so I'm getting crookneck squash on there pretty good. And on that one's got a few. So I'm going to grow them differently. Here we've got some zucchini who don't appear to be doing much. But as you can see, I had this is another place where we had a lot of raccoon damage. So the raccoon actually dug up the spike and dug around. And uh, we're going to talk about why that was in just a minute. So here we have the squash plant of justice. This squash plant is putting them out like crazy. That's gonna be squash number five and six. And so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I've been eating squash pretty good. And I can't wait to get the squash and the zucchini together because then I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to have some grilled vegetables. They'll be very nice. Now over here, these two squash plants, this one was completely dug up by the raccoon, but I mounded it up and it seems to be doing okay. And then over here, we have this one, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna get anything off of these or not. So that's that. So if you can see over here, a little update on the neighbor's yard. He's still working on the construction of his bed, but he's got dirt in there and he's got 
plants growing and they're doing good so a couple of those were donated from yours truly and then he got some other ones and he's got the cool rain uh coming off the roof um system so here you go you know the water goes down to the gutter goes down the gutter slides on down the main gutter system and waters the plants and i think that is pretty cool pretty cool here's your gratuitous pet mascot video you know ruby and gunner doing their thing what's up rube what's up gunner oh come on now stay in the camera there you go there you go pup pup pups oh they look bad yeah good puppies they're good puppies that's my uh, squirrel defense force all right guys so there's the garden tour we're slap in the middle of the afternoon so everything's not looking as perky as it does first thing in the morning or uh, the last thing in the evening and so tonight I'm going to be working on putting some uh, water to these guys I'm going to start picking up my watering to twice a week I was watering deeply once a week and I think now that the temperature is getting into the 80s I'm going to start hitting them deeply twice a week and hopefully that will take care of some of the issues I, I don't know if that uh, one tomato plant has got pest issues or if that's blossom end rot so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of those the affected tomatoes off then we're going to dissect them and see if we have caterpillars or not so my understanding there is a caterpillar that will bore into the sidewall of your tomatoes and it looks like blossom end rot but it's on the side so i don't know we'll, we'll find out together because i'm gonna do a video sorry nose itch i'm gonna do a video on that um as for operation rocket so if you didn't see the facebook or the instagram about uh Three nights ago, well, maybe a little bit more than that, I had a raccoon get into the garden. And the reason I believe he got into the garden it was because I was using a fish emulsion fertilizer. So uh, the fish emulsion, they've come through the backyard before while the dachshunds were sleeping and not been attracted to the garden at all. Like they're not here for the vegetables. So they, uh, the fish emulsion, it's pretty strong smelling stuff if you haven't ever used it. So they zeroed in, he came, I watched him on the, the ring cameras, come right up the drive, jump the fence, right across the yard to that first blue bucket. And then he dug up that uh, zucchini plant all the way up, looking for the uh, fish. So then he went to the next bucket, same thing, pepper bed, dug right down the middle of the pepper bed, which is coincidentally right where I, I poured the uh, fish emulsion, then over to the tomatoes and into some of the pots. And so, uh, I, as he went along, he dug less deep and less deep and less deep. So I really believe he was chasing the smell. Now, I live in the middle of a city. Um, it's not like we can countryfy, take care of our raccoon problem uh, like people in the country do. So I have to come up with other methods. Uh, my sister is a, um, like a raccoonologist. She's like Ellie Mae Clampett. And she has given me information on trapping and moving. I don't really know if that's necessary because uh, we'll see. The neighbors having trouble with the raccoons and armadillos. I'm having trouble with raccoons. Uh, I'm going to work with uh, whoever I need to work with to solve the problem. But uh, at a minimum, we'll try and do some deterrence, like with the dachshunds. If the dachshunds were on the ball and they would have been out in the yard, the raccoon would have never come in the yard. But they were inside sleeping. It was four in the morning when the raccoon came through. If we can trap and relocate, we'll trap and relocate. Uh, or if there's something else I can do that's not harmful to the dachshunds that will deter the raccoons, like people have mentioned mothballs. At, my grandma had mothballs. I don't even know what mothballs do. So I'm gonna have to uh, do some um, research and see, but supposedly uh, mothballs will, um, they will deter the raccoons because the raccoons don't like the smell or something, I don't know. Uh, today, so that's what we got to deal with. We got to deal with the raccoons, and um, luckily we have a lot of stray cats in the neighborhood, but they don't they don't come in the backyard because of the dogs. So we're good to go. So I'll keep you updated on Operation Rocket, so named after uh, Rocket the Raccoon on Guardians Galaxy, and uh, we'll have some updates on that. Today or tomorrow, we're flipping the compost, and we're going to be adding some coffee grounds and stuff to get it kicked up and, and smoking again, you know? Um, the one pile should be about done. And that's about it. So I'm gonna turn you around while this helicopter flies over. 
for a pan over or pan around of the garden and we'll get a look at it before we sign off here everything is doing really well i'm pretty pleased uh the tomato debacle uh, of losing the name tags has really cost me more uh, because I don't know what I have and it looks like I have an overabundance of cherry tomatoes rather than the big tomatoes. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. But that's it. That's your Monday update from Carl with Cultivate with Carl. And uh, we're signing out. And as I always say, guys, get a hobby. You know, you need a hobby. You need something to do in your spare time when you're not at work. Uh, you need to hang out with the family, do some fun stuff. Uh, get your family into gardening or get your family into bike riding. Get your family into something. Uh, get yourself into something for your good relaxation and mental health. Hobbies are important, whether it be gardening, you know, exercising, building uh, plastic models, you know, uh, going to the movies, whatever your hobby is. Just do it, have fun doing it, and relax. Too much craziness in the world to worry about that crap. So just worry about having a good time and, uh, Staying healthy. Words of wisdom from Carl. Signing off from Cultivate with Carl.